So there was this band back in the day, and there was a time where I would assume that everyone knew them, but then I remember that I'm an old man and half the people who watch these videos were born after 9-11. Jesus. And I know it's kind of out of touch to even talk about bands anymore. I feel like real bands don't even exist anymore. Even what's considered rock now is just electronic music. I sound so out of touch, I'm sorry. In my day, guys and gals would pick up wooden slabs called guitars and use their fingers to make noises with it. Anyway, I'm cool, I'm hip, I listen to Kanye West, okay? I put on a little peep and cry while thinking about the time I took too much Xanax, blacked out, and stole a Slipknot 7-inch from my friend's house. See, I'm cool as a cucumber. So, there was this band back in the day called the White Stripes. They were a bluesy punk rock duo made up of a man and woman, Jack and Meg White. You'll notice that they share a last name. That's because their gimmick was that they were twins. And they did look very similar, both with black hair that looked as crusty as the girl from the rings and a sickly pale demeanor that makes my complexion look like a fucking Jersey Shore cast member. And somehow, the gimmick actually really worked for them. People liked that this brother-sister duo were killing it in a rock band. The thing is, they weren't actually related. But, but, but they have the same last name. Yes, you are a genius and should probably join a local Mensa group due to your vast deductive reasoning skills. But there is a way that two totally unrelated people end up with the same last name. Marriage. Yeah, the brother and sister everyone fell in love with were actually husband and wife. In the grand scheme of things, it really didn't matter at all. But at the time, people were really pissed. I mean, I guess I get it. They'd fallen in love with these zombie-colored twins, and now they had to sit with the knowledge that these so-called twins were actually getting down to some hardcore fucking every night after their gigs. Now, how does that relate to anything? This is a fashion channel, after all. Well, here's the thing, bozo. I have varied interests. I'm a well-rounded human. I can talk about what I want. Actually, yes, this is a fashion video, and I bring up the case of the White Stripes because they remind me of another twin duo, except these ones are famous fashion designers. Their names are Dean and Dan Caton, the Canadian brother-brother duo behind the luxury brand D Squared. Now, these guys really are twins, unlike the White Stripes, but the bad part is that they do give me the squirmy feeling that they are a little too close. But first, I've looked into it, and a very, very small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. It's completely free. You just press that button, and you will not regret it. Thank you so much. Now, I am by no means insinuating that the Caton brothers, like the White Stripes, are getting down to some taboo bedroom shindigs. If that were the case, I wouldn't be making a humorous video about it. Instead, I'd be projectile vomiting onto all my nice clothes. However, they do give me a creepy feeling, one that has kept me from indulging in any of their brand's clothing. I mean, it doesn't help that at a first glance at their sharp Anglo-European features and dead blue eyes puts them right at the top of the list as the next stars in a funny game sequel, as the killers, of course. However, the weirdness goes much deeper than that. In this video, we're going to examine why Dean and Dan give off such an off-putting vibe and learn more about their brand D Squared. Let's start off by hearing a bit about where they came from. Look, you gotta learn. I know you got a Supreme Box logo and now you think you got everything you need in life, but knowledge is power, okay? So Dean and Dan are from Toronto, Canada, a very fashionable city, believe it or not. I once went there early on in my fashion awakening and went to the Saks Fifth Avenue in their mall, and I really wanted to buy some Gucci shoes until I found out they were 600 bucks. Gasp! If only that little rapscallion could see who he'd grow into. That's right, a fully grown adult who spends way too much money on clothes. Anyway, the Caton bros have seven older siblings, which means I can only assume their mother is just a baby cannon, spitting them out like t-shirts at a monster truck rally. The baby brothers grew up with an interest in fashion, went to Parsons to train for it, and yes, that is the Parsons of Tim Gunn fame. Eventually, they moved to Italy, where they worked under Gianni Versace, which may be where their love of all things extra came from. Really though, look at their t-shirts. D Squared is like a Spencer's Gifts t-shirt wall with an Italian pedigree. They also put in some time working for Diesel, another brand that appears to lack any concrete brand identity, and instead just makes whatever they think will sell. Diesel actually went on to provide the funding when the brothers decided to venture off on their own and start D Squared in 1994. 
That's really all you need to know on that front, other than the fact that they've become hugely successful with this multiple personality disorder suffering brand. And the thing is, I'm not making this video because I hate the clothes. Well, sometimes I hate the clothes. Other times, though, I'll see a D-squared piece and think, oh, that's hot fire. But as my finger hovers over the Add to Cart button, my mind starts to drift over to the image of these two twins who happen to have the same effect on me that the ones in The Shining do. Suffice it to say, the piece never makes it into my cart. But the brand is really popular. Tons of celebrities wear them like Rihanna, Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Kendrick Lamar, and more. But the thing is, every big brand has a list like that, and you never really know if it's because those people actually think the clothes look good, or because those brands are paying out the ass just to have that celebrity wear their piece out so it gets printed in a tabloid or worn on a red carpet. So let's talk about the real reason D Squared creeps me out. It's time to get personal. I just felt like an action star or like a movie trailer narrator there. D Squared creeps him out, and this time it's personal. Let's get the petty stuff out of the way first. Dean and Dan's faces don't move when they speak. It's very possible that they've been riddled with burdensome plastic surgery. Looking at them, I find that very believable. Or maybe it's just how they are. But it's an affect that I find very off-putting. Even their lips don't really move, so the words just kind of fall out of their mouths when they speak in a very unpleasant way. Hand in hand with that, their eyes float around upwards as they speak, like they're talking to you, but they're not really there. More likely, they're in their heads plotting their next ritualistic killing or something. I know all this is hard to visualize, so just watch this clip and I think you'll see what I mean. I think we consider ourselves very fortunate to have hung around for 20 years. With, you know, so many people that started at the same time as us, you know, aren't around anymore. And it's a tough business. Nobody's welcoming anybody. Uh, so I guess we're good at kicking and screaming, scratching. We're proud. We're proud that we've done what we wanted to do. Uh, we've arrived to a certain point in our careers, and um, things are actually just kind of falling into place right now. They kind of look like what you get if you tried to make a Tom Brown Ken doll, and then you bought two of them for some reason. And much like another weirdo we looked at on this channel recently, the leathery garbage bro Philippe Plant, these guys ooze vanity. They seem like the kind of guys who would make it their life's mission to impregnate as many people as possible out of some weird desire to expand their bloodline or something. Yeah, they definitely look like the types that care a lot about their bloodline. That's enough about their looks though. It's mean and petty and I hate to make anyone feel less than because of how they look or talk or whatever. There are a shitload of weirdos in fashion who I haven't and don't plan on making a video about. So why do the Catons get one? Well, because it all adds up to such a repellent hole for me. First off, let's just take a look at their graphics. And boy, do the twins love a graphic t-shirt. They must have like a graphic designer sweatshop army pumping these things out. They have some common themes that they come back to over and over and over and over again. First and foremost, themselves. Yes, they promote the hell out of themselves. And I'm not talking about the D-squared brand. That I totally get. Every brand puts out t-shirts with their name on it. It's easy money. But no, these guys like to literally make shirts about themselves. Caton Twins. Caton Twins Convicted. Toronto's Caton Twins, 1964 Caton Twins designed by Dean and Dan from Canada. Dean and Dan Caton Twins, brothers born in Canada. It's like they're doing search engine optimization through clothing, just tagging their shirts with every iteration of Caton, Twins, Dean, Dan, and Canada that they can. And speaking of which, Canada is a very, very common theme as well. Listen, I understand national pride. I feel like they think it's humorous, and in a way I get it. All the big luxury brands like to do that stuff with their graphics and brand prints. You know, like Prada Milano, Fendi Roma, Balenciaga Paris, Burberry London, and so on. So why wouldn't D Squared have fun with that idea and do the same? Well, as with all things D Squared, I'd understand if the concept actually called for it, but instead it just feels like it's squeezed onto everything like some sort of OCD fixation where if it isn't done, you think your mom will get hit by a car or something. And now I'm going to contradict myself, because while on the one hand they're obsessively fixated on these oddly precise motifs, on the other they have an absolutely schizophrenic attitude when it comes to their brand identity. 
I challenge anyone to give me a coherent explanation of what someone is supposed to take away from D squared clothing. And that's not an impossible thing to do. Look at just about any other big brand and it's actually fairly easy. Gucci does vintage bohemian chic, like stuff you'd find in your grandpa's sweater cabinet, but make it luxury. Balenciaga does brutalist pieces with harsh angles and exaggeration. Rick Owens does dark, elongated fashion. You know, try a few yourself. It's actually pretty fun and a really great way to figure out if a brand's aesthetic actually speaks to you or not. Now, try it for D Square. Maybe I'll put in like a cricket sound effect there. If you don't hear it, I'm just too lazy and hint, my laziness will always win out. Take a look at some D-squared pieces from recent seasons. I don't see a common thread, other than that the twins like models who look like themselves, and they like to show some skin, I guess. I mean, lordy lordy, we just went from their ranch to corporate futurism to prep school to a rave to the apocalypse. Every single piece looks like it came from a totally different brand. I'm not hating on any piece in particular, and I could easily point you towards various D-squared pieces that I like a lot. But if I can't figure out what you're trying to say with your clothes, why would I want to wear them? I'll give you a little insight into my personal fashion process. When I find a new brand or designer who catches my eye, I'll do a quick Google search. Whether you're a boomer or a zoomer, I know you've got a smartphone. Open up Chrome or Safari or whatever you've got, it ain't hard. Anyway, I just look up a couple collections from them and a little bio about the designer. Looking at the collections gives me an idea of whether they have an actual point of view or if they just happen to make one cool piece. And reading the bio tells me whether I vibe with them on a personal level. And voila, the end, with literally the bare minimum amount of effort, I suddenly know whether I'm a fan or not. In D Squared's case, the Google test does not help them out. No matter how skilled they are, their bio gives the impression that they're a couple of white guys who have been successful based on the twins gimmick and sheer force of will. The collection search, well, we just saw how that went. Not good. And a little side note on their Google test, one of the big things that comes up in D squared search results is a controversy. Bum bum bum. Yeah, I never would have guessed it, but apparently white guys in their 50s can be really tone deaf when it comes to cultural issues. The Twins Fall Winter 2015 collection bore the name D Squaw. By the way, squaw is a derogatory term for native women. And it only goes downhill from there. They cast a bunch of white models in a sexy Native American cosplay fashion show. They claim to want to mix the enchantment of Canadian Indian tribes with the confident attitude of the British aristocracy. Translation, cultural, maybe even literal genocide. They're literally celebrating colonialism, which specifically in the context of Canadian natives is a history of murder, sexual abuse, child theft, and more. So Dean and Dan, thank you so much for showing the world how fucking idiotic you are. And I want to end this video where we started, the White Stripes and how they relate to the Caton twins. Well, remember how the White Stripes were actually sleeping together? It turns out the Caton twins do the same. Now, they're not having sex, thank the sweet baby Lord Jesus for that, but they have admitted that they still sleep in the same bed. Two brothers, in their 50s, snuggling up together. Now, far be it from me to tell them what they can and can't do. In fact, according to them, they have a very good reason for it. They were abused as children and they just feel safe in the same bed together. I am perfectly on board with doing whatever you've got to do to get through trauma. I'm also totally fine with dudes sleeping together. However, like I said earlier, you want to support brands who you vibe with. Two middle-aged brothers sharing a bed is not a wavelength I want to be on, no matter how justifiable it is. So that's my take. The Caton twins are creepy and creepily close, and I can't help but extend that feeling to their brand D squared. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Wild and Weird Brothers and their brand. Watch the other video on screen here, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and follow me on Instagram. It's low luxury with an underscore at the beginning and end. I answer like every message you send me on there, so hit me up, we'll talk, and I'll see you next time.